Okay, we're gonna make a GPU tier list. So 4090 goes in S tier, 4080 Ti, it goes into B because it's not the most uh, cost effective. Uh, 4070 goes into B, 3080 Ti S tier, 3060, where is 3060 Ti? Yeah, 3080 is S tier, uh, 3060 Ti is, uh, I would say A tier. 3070, A tier, 3090, uh, I would say A or B if you can do the power limits and get it for cheap, but we'll put it in the B tier just to cost. And then 3070 Ti, not great. Um, 3060 is okay, B. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna rate the uh, other other ones those <laughs> because uh, I don't have a bunch of experience with AMD cards yet, uh, but this would be my, my quick rating. So some of you might be familiar with the different form factors of GPUs, but the consumer form factor, basically uh, Nvidia has terms of service. So you can't just use like, you can't make a 4090 in one of the other form factors or a 4070. Uh, they make it so that these are meant for desktop use, right? So they have usually have three fans on them and these are generally quieter than, than a blower style like workstation. And the, the fans are basically there's a big heat sink on the GPU and they, the fans blow the air out and away from the card. And then so you need a, basically air pressure in the case you have fans in the front or exhaust, uh, you know, bringing cool air in, the, in, the, in, the, in from the top or in from the front and then blowing across the GPU out the back. Uh, and this is how you cool a consumer card. Um, a workstation card, these are called blower style where they suck the air in here and then blow the air out the back. And so these, uh, they obviously, the big advantage is they're much smaller. These are actually, so there is a PCIe standard for like actual physical dimensions of, you know, full length, half height, half length. Um, there are extremely specific physical dimensions. Um, but these, these cards, the professional cards actually adhere to that. So they can fit like say two or three into a workstation where consumer cards are just willy nilly and whatever size, you know, basically there's two slot or three slot or four slot or, but you know, they're, they're just, some of them can be longer and they just make them whatever size they want. Um, so the important part here is that you can't take a blower card. You can't take one of these consumer GPUs and turn it, put it on a blower. Um, Nvidia terms of service doesn't allow that. Now some Chinese companies and other guys do that, but uh, Nvidia does not like that or does not technically allow it. But again, these take the cool air in here and shoot it at the back. And again, the benefit is you can stack a bunch of them in a, in a small form factor. And you have really nice cards like the, the 4000 ADA, the 4000 SFF ADA is like the only single slot card that you don't need a power, uh, you know, power connector, it's just 70 watts. And you can just plug it into a one U server that doesn't have a GPU power connector. The other big thing about these uh, data um, workstation cards is they have the power connector on the back. And so like a consumer card is gonna have the power connector on the top, whereas a data center or a workstation card has the connect power connector on the back of the card. And that's obviously really important um, because quite quite literally you can't fit a, if there's a server that supports, um, let's see if they have a picture of the back, uh, of course not. Um, you know, uh, basically if you have a server that supports uh, a, you know, do, uh, double slot uh, blower cards, then they're not gonna be able to fit a consumer card because the connector is gonna be in the wrong location. Uh, and then you have the data center cards, which are the most expensive, but these are called passive double wide or single wide cards. And these are just one giant heatsink, right? So an H100 or L40S, these actually don't have any fans on them. They're just one giant heatsink and you need to have the fans on the server. And so the obvious benefit of this is that you, you wanna have a bunch of these all very in very close proximity and you have the platform, you're not wasting any power on the, on the, on the card doing uh, fans, you're, you're actually using the fans from the system to cool the cards. Hey guys, it's JM. I made a spreadsheet to compare GPU farming efficiency for a bunch of NVIDIA cards. Now this spreadsheet turns out will be useful for comparing any workload that you want to compare versus different NVIDIA GPUs. And so the way I put this together was I put the cards up here and I have included some of the new cards that, that NVIDIA just announced with the uh, 4070 Super, 4070 Ti Super and 4080 Super. So you'll see the consumer cards over here, the data center cards here, which are the like passive double wide cards that are for use in like high density servers. 
And then the workstation cards, which um, yeah, th these are typically your blower style GPUs that have the fan intake on the front of the card and then it actually blows that hot air out the back. So these are for jamming a bunch of cards into a workstation uh, and they have different airflow characteristics than a consumer card. So uh, for the most part, they're all PCIe Gen 4 uh, besides the one, the H100 is, is the only Gen 5 card that they have out. Um, but so what I put in here, I put the CUDA cores, the boost clock and the base clock, and I, I'm not really using the base, but I'm just using the number of CUDA cores times the boost clock and calculating the floating point 32 flops. Now this should be a pretty good indication. Uh, it's, it's like this plus memory bandwidth that is, is kind of indicative of performance and of course power, because if you, um, you know, the, the higher the power, the higher the boost clock can be if for a longer sustained period of time with the number of cores. But then I, I match that to, you know, this is, I just did a basic calculation of a core count times the boost clock times two divided by a thousand gigahertz to floating, you know, FP32 uh, uh, teraflops. And then I basically listed what NVIDIA puts on their website in their spec sheet and compared my calculated number versus theirs. So it's pretty close. And so I put the power here and you have two really interesting metrics. You have teraflops per watt and then you have dollar per teraflop. And I, I've just basically taken the ASP of the cards. For some of the, for the three series cards I've used, I'm using used prices because you're typically not buying a three series new. These are older cards. Um, again, you can, if you have specific pricing, you can make a copy of this sheet and, and put in your own pricing. If you, um, and we'll, we'll go through that, but uh, yeah. So for the, the, the important part is um, there's two kind of interesting characteristics, right? So I, I've kind of gra graded this where you get this teraflops per watt, which in um, you, you really want the highest number of output uh, for the lowest amount of power. And you can see something like an L4 or an L40S is like tremendously power efficient, but the dollar per you know dollar per teraflop is insanely high. Where you pay you pay a huge premium for that efficiency and that data center form factor. Uh, but there are some really interesting cards, like right, and I'll I'll talk about my favorite cards. So the the 4090 is just an absolute beast. Um, so you'll see, you know, typically the, the Chia farming will follow the, the teraflops. And so you can just look at like, you know, a if, if a card like a 4090 has 82 teraflops, that should theoretically outperform a, you know, be 2X, uh, over 2X of what a 3090 or 3090 Ti is. And, and typically actually we, we see just about that in, in practice. Um, and then you know, the dollar per teraflop is easy. We just calculate it from the uh, the cost and the uh, FP32 performance. So this row, P, is, um, I got this from the community spreadsheet from the Gigahorse um, Discord. There's some folks that have contributed their PIB filter to V6 of C18. And then I'm, you know, basically just making sure that they're all in the right format. You can do, do your dollar per PIB of farming. And so theoretically, the lowest number here should be your most efficient card for plotting sorry and for farming but um and by the way plotting kind of follows this the same general thing but maybe a little bit more focus on there's more focus on memory bandwidth like so some of the cards that don't do as well um i, I also don't think giga horse has the ada stuff properly configured yet uh, it's as far as i understand um for the plotting but so for for farming um what you would do is basically uh, you download you go to max's uh, repo and you'd go to his Chiapas folder or Linux or Windows and you, know, you can pick your right version but he has this Chia proof of space um, Chia proof of space uh, binary right and so you can run this proof of space uh, proof of space and then you can run farm and then dash F and then you want to run your plot and you can run uh, with a diff and so this is like simulating pool difficulty so if you're in I think the default is 100 we can just try the default first and so you basically just run this command and it's going to use your GPU and you can see here, um, this is going to ramp up my GPU to a hundred percent nearly should. Um, and this is my, my 4090 that's in my, my gaming desktop. Uh, <laughs> again, I, I'm not using this for, for chia harvesting, but, uh, I really do think um, 4090 is an, an incredible pick just because of the efficiency. But you can see it just it's just going to run through a, a thousand challenges, and it'll do if depending on the difficulty it, it may have to do. These are just doing quality checks, but some of them actually do foolproof 
lookups based on like a pool difficulty uh, and getting, you know, receiving a partial that you have to do a full proof of space on. And so you can see here the output here, a 4090 on the default settings can do 5.2 PIB uh, at, at max farm size. Now that's, uh, I have some stuff running in the background, which is, is why um, it's uh, usually like 10 or something like that. Yeah, you can see uh, I'm doing the recording and the video encode of <laughs> the OBS. But, uh, you know, typically a, the 4090 is um, you actually like almost almost 10 uh, PIB at filtered 512. And so the 4090 is, um, yeah, 4.895 is what they got from the spreadsheet. Um, so yeah, it's just an absolute beast, right? You can, and I, I use C18, you can obviously put whatever C level you want here, but uh, C18 is what I'm using, so that's why I'm comparing C18. So uh, you can see from the spreadsheet, um, the other ones that stand out, and, and again, I would love to get this whole thing filled out if people can, can contribute, but um, you can obviously see that uh, the 3080 Ti at 500 bucks is amazing you know, in dollar per PIB farming. It'll farm five petabytes at filter 512 and 2.5 petabytes of C18 at filter 256. 3080 is another of, by the just benchmarks I've seen have been an amazing card, you know, especially for if you can get them for 400, $450. You know, they are not as efficient, right? Your teraflops per watt is half of the 4090, right? So your, your OPEX is going to be 2X, right? It's going to cost 2X the amount of energy. Um, now, so people have done some cool stuff like done a 3090, but run it at power limit 250. So taking that, uh, you know, 350 watts, uh, actually, I think some of the 3090s I've seen are at 420 watts, taking those down to like 250 watts and actually runs, you maybe lose 20% of the performance, but you're running at a much lower power. So again, not if you care about just best value for the card, then you're not going to run these at a lower power. But uh, you can see, so if you if you care about only if you care about only cost for the cards, the three series like 3060, 30, 30, 3060 Ti, 3070, 3080, 38 Ti are just an incredible value. Um, oh, I think I thought I had the 3060 Ti data in here, but he actually includes it in in the Giga Horse. I'll, I'll I'll run it and throw it back in there, but. His 3060 Ti is his kind of benchmark, um, which, you know, C18, uh, I think he's got max at filter 512, 2.45 uh, five petabytes. Um, yeah, so uh, what I'll do is, uh, you know, I'll get this filled in. If people want to leave the comments on the sheet, you know, directly in the, like you can say, uh, you know, whatever, insert comment of what you what you have measured, uh, I can throw it in here. But um, yeah, again, 4090 is just an absolute beast. Um, and uh, all the three series just generally perform extremely well as far as dollar per petabyte farming, but um, you know, not going to be as efficient. Of course, I would love to get some of these uh, data center or um, you know, workstation cards, but none of them are competitive just from a price performance, and so it really doesn't make any sense uh, to use these unless, for instance, you already have them. Um, and so with, with this kind of num with these kind of numbers, you can go into your run pod and then you can look at, say, say for instance, there's community cloud, you know, like 4070 Ti at, you know, 25 cents an hour. Um, that's actually a, a very, very good price for if you don't have local compute to be able to do um, remote decompression, you know, and something even like, you know, you can see here like a 3080 is 18 cents an hour. Um, that's an incredibly good deal. If again, if you don't have GPUs to do decompression, you can see I have my little uh, Giga Recompute Ubuntu template, which I'm using just right now. As while I'm um, while I'm moving some GPUs around, I have some some 24090s deployed uh, in the cloud, <laughs> so um, so I can actually do this stuff without having any downtime with my farmer. Uh, but yeah, let me know how uh, if this is helpful. And um, yeah, thanks.